Who changed uh, Bantu names to colored, to negro, to black, to African, American, and why? History. Falsity of names blinds us to synchronicity. African American refers to descendants of enslaved black people who are from the United States. What? Are you black African American, Afro American, or black African American? Or black American? And why does it matter? Does it hide your history? Does it fudge your identity? Names change, changing history. Let's give an example of who is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. You can look from Wikipedia. Do you know that Netanyahu was a Russian? Or is a Russian? Rabbi Nathan Milanowski, uh, born August 15, 1879, February to February 4, 1935, was a Zionist rabbi, educator, writer, and political activist shown here. Milanowski, grandson, is now the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Who is this man? Who is Milowiski? Milo, Milo Kowiski was born in Kreva, Russian Empire today, located in Belarus, which at that time was part of the Pale of Settlement, a region of Imperial Russia. So he is a, he's a Russian by any matter. So around the 1920s, they migrated to uh, Israel at the age of uh, 10. By uh, 1920, Milowiski immigrated to uh, to mandatory Palestine and became the director of school of Velkosmi in Rosh Pina. During this time, he published various articles in the Hebrew press promoting the Jewish settlement of the Galilee region. On some of the articles he published, he signed under the name Netanyahu, a surname his sons adopted. You can read a lot about this change from this and many, many other so-called Jews today who go by various names. You can read from this website how and why that was changed. So what is it that has to do with names? Who is Enki? We see here, this is Enki. He looks more of African. Of course, there are many other images of Enki. And there again, we can see that there is a Baal here. You look at Baal there, and what he's wearing there is actually an Egyptian crown. This word is similar, Ankh or Angu. This is the Ankh, and this is the Ankh. And these are more, more of uh, derivations of the Ankh, this is a, a jet. Initially, we learned that a cow was associated with deities during pre-dynastic uh, ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Indus Valley. In Mesopotamia, the word Enki, spelled this way, which is closely related to Inca, is name of one of creator uh, gods of the Anunnaki group, largely believed to have created men in his image. Enki is thought to be what Christians know today as Elohim. With this, let us correct a few names we may think are not African. Because we have been programmed to think they are not African. Once we correct these names, we connect and remove inaction that arises from falsity of names that blinds us uh, to synchronicities. Ours, as well as our existence and history, synchronicities arranges with constant periodicity all the things that we need in life. You can study about these names, these ancient Egyptian names and ancient names from uh, the book written by Akan Takruri, Egyptian language connections to other African tribes, a collect collection of linguistic connections. It's a fantastic book. Kase Kamui. This is Enki. He looks African. So we have realized that the cow was uh, revered among us, the Maasai, the Hima, the Herero, the Sidama, the Fulani, the Kalenjini, and the Tutsi uh, cultures, even Shona, Debele, Zulus, many, many other Southern Africa, the African cultures venerated the cow. The Kalenjini name for God is Enki or Enkai. There is a place in Zimbabwe called Nkai. Kai. It is also closely related to how the Kikuyu pronounce their God, Ngai. Cow or Boo was a representation of God Hapi or Hapi or Apis or Apis, who served as an intermediary between humans and all powerful creator or god, Ptah or Ta, later Osiris, then Atum or Atema. The Romans twisted this to Serapis and adopted it in their mythology. So this word Nkai in Shona is Ngadi, same thing, we are one thing, but if you do not connect the dots, you will ne never know. Let's look at this pharaoh, Kasekam Ngi. Kasekam spelled this way, Okajge Kamwi, Okajge Kamwi, Okajge Kwima was the final king of the second dynasty of ancient Egypt, 2690. This word Kajge is also Shona, Chishona. This Kamge means one, Kajge means it. In Bantu Rwandan, Kajge Kwima means he who is born to rule. Kajge Kamwe means born a single, born one, alone. So Faro Kajge Kamwe is shown here. They attacked the nose and they dismembered it and destroyed it for reasons best known to us today. Let's look at Pharaoh Ramses, so-called Ramses. This is the child Rames, Ramesu, and this is an African child today. Total looks, you can find a lot of stuff on Total looks 
like dot com. And this is a fake name change accompanied by false image is still a lie. They tell us that this is the mummy of this man, of an African with a nose like that. That's impossible. Can't be. Look at this as an African. Look at this as an African. So let's not waste time. We've dealt with that. It's thorough. It's clear. Bantu name for Kamose is Kamasa. It means young bull. Faro Ramesis. The Bantu name for Ramesis is Rumeza. Ramesis one was Rumeza Midayango. Manfatra. His son was Seti one who was also known as Sindi or Sandi or Yuhi. Msindi in Rwanda, Rumeza, is the founding ruler. Upon the throne, he became known as Manfatra, according to hieroglyphics. So, Ramesis is an African name. His, his proper name is Rumeza Mriangu Manfatra, or Mandifuratira, to be, to be very thorough and to be clear. So, it is spelled like this, Remeza, or Rumeza, or Rumizi, meaning a root. The African Americans, they want to tell us, and the Caribbean, they want to tell us that his name was Ramesu. It's impossible. His name is Rumeza. He was of the falcon tribe, which gives him the totem Ungwe, and therefore gives him the right to be the founder and ruler of Zimbabwe. He was a Tutsi of the Nyiginya Asinga clan. It's clear, it's straightforward. There is no need. But what we are highlighting is that name changes destroys destroys the truth. So the term Rumeza Muriangu amplifies Rumeza's meaning as he who accords life to the nations. Muriangu, Muriangu. So Kumera, which is a verb from Rumeza, means growth. It's also a shown word for that, Kumera. Okumira, it can be seen as representing as an M like uh, pictography shaped like roots of a tree or a carrot signifying Kumera growth itself. As a sun cliff, it stands for roots or midzi. Or midzi. That's where you get the word midzimu. A tree papyrus pictography, miriangu or families. This is muriangu or families or unu or anu. Humanity, nations, but it's a symbol of Simaidawi or another branch or a big branch or another department. It's clear that we are dealing with the names that have been changed for a purpose, that's not correct. This is Rumeza Muriang. He's a proper African. He's never and was never and will never be a European. He will never be an Asian or an Arab or a white Arab. He is a proper Bantu. He's a Muntu. Ramesside uh, DNA he is known to be of Tutsi royal clan. He's of that of King Kigeli the fifth. Same. So the mummy conspiracies comes today and they try to tell us funny stories. But how easy is a uh, suggestion like that to materialize in this world. And then now the propagandists, the tabloids, the mainstream television uh, and the computer remodelings of King Tutu and Ramesses makes them appear European, but they are like that. So why are they now being changed to look like a European? It is because they want them to look like themselves. The people that do that, they have no history. They are, they caved themselves in exact replicas of themselves in stone as black Africans. We are showing them here. Why should they be needed to hypothesize and remodel their identities and their appearances? Unless, of course, there is an intent to distort, to misinform, to mislead, and to steal, and also to accompany name changes. Ancient Egyptian and Cushitic uh, domains are uh, extended far deep into Africa. Pharaonic influences, particularly around the mountain of the moon here, Ruwenzori, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Muhabura, Mount Nyirakongo. Mount Eglon is described in the Ugandan oral legend as Tembuzi. You shall see that name is very criti critical. Era in uh, 11th century before common era. A possible later continuation of from Sumerian influence of this area has these names that are found to have existed 60,000 years ago. Or a king, Emen, Luana, and Dumuzi, which is part of my name, Dumizulu, or Tembuzi, peacefully ruled Africa during that time. This is Africa, the whole of it, up to the, the four rivers, the Nile, and the Euphrates. This is our continent. Let's look at uh, Monomtapa Empire, where they have also played with the name. This is the symbol, the bird. Monomtapa Empire, or Motepa, or Munumshapa, or Munumhotep. Right around the time of the Great Egyptian Cushitic era in the north, Monomtapa Empire thrived in southern Africa, as we have indicated. Monomtapa began around 16th century before Common Era. And even prior to that, officially forget the whole history of 11,000. And it was, it was a major area where gold was sourced and mined for supply into Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt and Kush and Nubia. Many North Africans traveled thus far, including the Numidians, who were black, to trade. The name Monomtapa is Bantu. M-N-M-H-T-P. Utupo or Hotep, as they want to call it. Commonly known as Amen Utapa by Egyptologists. Suggesting that either Amen Hotep, one, two... 3 and 5 or Akhenaton had an influence over the Bronze Age speaking uh, Bantus and the uh, Basarwa or so-called sun in Southern Africa. We continue 
to look at the Lozi who were in the Monomtapa, the dominant tribe in the Monomtapa era. As they are described in the oral uh, legend as remarkable among the Batembu's leadership. The Tembus or Lozi or Dambuza or Dembus or Dumizulu, the Batembu's are again what the Shona legend call Lozi or Lozi, the wise ones, great thinkers, forefathers, light bearers, also known as Lozi in Zulu or Sindebele, which term implies spirit of ancestors. It comes in many variants as Lozi, which term also means magic or paranormal people in Bantu dialects. Again, it implies cattle keepers in Lunyankole as in, as in the term Abalos. Its roots come from the letters L, Z, and R, Z, which meant thought. Roji actually means the brain in Shona. Test, test knowledge, illumination of the mind. It was also considered that the cattle keepers were the super thinkers and often illuminated ones. Therefore, the term Abalos. Such people were possessed great knowledge. They had also great uh, ability to perform miracles. They were magicians, excellent. They were healers and therefore worthy of leadership. Abalosi, the roots given like that, means that these people were great. In, in the dog one, they were known as the Dagara. Also, or Dogo, or Gona, if you face that. Or Omlozi. Razu also is the ray for light. Lwazi also means to know in uh, Sindebele. The ancient Egyptian king Tut Ankoma was given a new face and therefore a new name to Tenkamen. But here is his. Here is his ancestor. So Intare, Intare Yaba Nyiginya, Mwene Gahima, meaning the lion of the Nyiginya descendants of Hem. Tenkamen or King Tutu or Pharaoh Tutu Ankoma was a Tutsi as per his name and a phrenology. His name means from consonants Tutu Ankoma, Tutu Yankaiman, Tutsi Teta Nka, Nkau, Amen or Amen is to Rwandis or Kinyarwanda for God. Teta means scrape or clean or find out nka imana teta nkia imana or tuti nka ya mana means hell cow of god or royal cow of god or hell the living god or divine cow you also find him in west africa the donor the dynasty names are there in african tradition we adopt ancestral names that shouldn't surprise us let's go to uh mesopotamia we have already seen uh, that so King Tutu's name was indigenous, pronounced as Teta Nkiaimana. In most interpretations of what was found written by archaic Egyptians on papyri and the pyramid walls, 19th century or 20th century Eurocentric scholars and tomb raiders corrupted and twisted vowels to, to de-Africanize the findings in the glyphs. The twisting of interpretations began during Hellenistic period when Macedonian Greeks invaded and took over Egypt for over 250 years followed by the Romans. The same has happened in the interpretation of what was deciphered of Sumerian tablets. You can see this is the Sumerian king, king of Uruk, Uruka, jump, or Uruki, which means knit or put it together. Just like what his hands are showing you there, 3,500 years before common BCE. From the Sumerian king list, Bantu names like Lugara, you find Bantu names like Banda, you find Bantu names like Zambia, Imana, Luanda, Dumuzi, Balulu, Lugalungu, Lugalurure, Inana, Inyana. Inyana means young bed, or mean young child, or Inkaisaishas, or Inkushkush, or Inkuntuse, or Inkuntuntu, Ruhora Mina Mbundu, or Lugala Nimpundu, or Kababa, or Kubaba, or Ganda, or Sisulu, or Ubaya, or Tutu. They ring bells. These are ancient names. It's so clear. It's so straightforward. In conclusion, therefore, names change history. We are the sons and daughters of great kings and queens. Beware of the falsity of names that blinds us to synchronicities. When you understand this message that I've just shared with you, it's a synchronicity. We have come in touch and in contact with your ancestor. You name it, it's yours. It's the art of spiritual control. Happy, never die, never dries. He renamed the river Nile. Thank you, this is preacher Rabbi L.M. Tumizulu. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Hebrew Ethics, and uh, Life Spirit of Amen is our website. You can get in touch with us on lmtumizulu at gmail.com. Uh, this is our time. 
and this is the time to walk with God again. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>